Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review the fourth installment of the Hatchet franchise, Victor Crowley, Return to His Swamp. Written and directed by Adam Green, starring Perry Shen, Felissa Rose, Laura Ortiz, Dave Sheridan, and Kane Hodder as Victor Crowley. This movie takes place 10 years after the Bayou Butchers Massacre that happened in this very swamp, in which a deformed boy was taunted and harassed and his house was set on fire and his dad accidentally cut his face with a hatchet. He quickly became a legend and was resurrected or turned into a ghost through a voodoo curse and became Victor Crowley and went on this murderous rampage. Well, now Perry Shen is the lone survivor of these murders and he's written a book. And now he's asked to retell his story at the swamp that the murders took place for a talk show. So what do we like? I liked that we actually have a fourth Hatchet film. The Hatchet franchise is beyond amazing. It's just one of those series that you can watch anytime and it's a great tale and I like that it's continuing. We had a really enjoyable and funny cast. Every character you're going to like and that's what kind of makes this series great is because you fall in love with the characters so when they die it's so much more impactful. You're like, oh no, no, don't kill him. Having additions like Felissa Rose and Tiffany Shepis, women who are very well known in the horror community, having them appear is awesome. And Quinn from Impractical Jokers. And I love the fact that Perry Shen is back. Now the ongoing joke with the Hatchet series is Perry Shen has been in every film, but as a different character. So in this one, it's the first time where he reprises his role as Andrew. So the joke isn't there, but I do like that he's still in this film and he did a great job. Victor Crowley doesn't fall flat with how much gore we get to see because a lot of the kills are on screen and they're in the over the top fashion that you appreciate. Usually you get more than just a graphic kill, you get like a comedic graphic kill. It's always overkill and that's what's excellent. And so people who are a fan of the original are going to really appreciate the kills in this one as well. I really enjoyed Laura Ortiz. I'm not too familiar with the actress, to be honest. I haven't seen Holliston and I feel ashamed. I know. <laughs> She's great. I don't think I've really seen her before. If I have to share this condemned hotel with you and listen to you two awkwardly do it all night long, I think you can deal with my tits for a few minutes. She was hilarious and she's a very attractive as well. She has that sexy voice. I don't know what it is. Yeah, she sounds like a voice actor for sure and I'm, I'm very down. Well, all right, Bill Grums. Well, let's get on moving. A real surprise for me was Dave Sheridan's character. Everything Dylan did was absolutely hilarious and I want more Dylan. I think he's a great character and a great addition to this series because he was the comic relief and he was really funny in doing so. And it's hard to be a comic relief in like a generally funny movie, but he was definitely like, just like a higher tier of comedy, I feel. It's because Marlon's been teaching him well. Rose, by any other name. I have a dick. So where'd you study? Uh, once an undergrad. He got his like, basic start off in scary movie. Yeah, he was deputy doofy, but like him and Marlon Wayans are in tons of movies together. I feel they're best friends. It's nice to see Kane Hodder putting all that awesome makeup back on because we've heard him talk about how much of a pain in the ass it is to wear like 50 pounds of makeup. And it's great to see him back reprising his role as Victor Crowley because he's just a beast. In this one, they gave him more screen time. He was taunting the victims. He was just kind of like standing there like, come on, come out here, here's the bait, come out. And like, we got to see Victor Crowley emotions. Being able to see him and see his character develop in a different direction, I felt that it worked. Now what didn't we like? One of my biggest problems was the kills, I think. Which is weird because like, they are better than average kills. So don't, like, don't get that twisted. They are certainly great kills if they're in any other movie. But the way that the Hatchet series progressed, the kills got more and more ridiculous as it went on, where sometimes Victor Crowley would just have like this massive chainsaw that could cut through multiple people, or, or tugging intestines out forever. They were so fucking awesome. In this one, I think there's only two kills that you would even 
put on a top 10 list, and I'm not even sure if they'd make it. So I don't think that the kills were as strong as the rest of the series. The way that the films take place in the first three, it's more like an exploration through the swamp and you get a lot of great cinematography, you get a lot of interesting situations, but in this film, it just takes place by the plane and in the plane, which is kind of disappointing because you want this whole exploration of the bayou and Victor Crowley popping out out of nowhere to kill someone, and you don't get that in this film. Yeah, this is very much a one location kind of movie. No one gets out of the plane! And I don't think that this is like the best vehicle to deliver the legend of Victor Crowley, to be honest, because it would be so easy for him to just murder everybody in one location, not even a problem for him. And it's hard not to make references to the prior films. I know that's kind of weird, but I mean, this is the fourth installment, you have to. Another bit of a disappointment is the fact that you come to expect a lot of like big cameos of horror icons in this franchise or like I'm not taking away from the characters we do have but it's like the Sharknados of the franchise you're just waiting for which next cameo is going to be in here I don't think Adams Green's going to really appreciate you comparing it to Sharknado but I totally agree not I mean it was nice to see Tyler Maine yeah. so he was there uh, and there are like a couple other things, even like his Arwen, Adam Green's dog gets an appearance and a shout out on the ship. But I totally agree. I think that more people from the horror community should have been involved. But we also have to take into consideration that this was a secret project. So the crew and the cast, it was very, very small because they didn't tell anybody that this was happening. And that's really cool, but yes, I wish we had more cameos. There was something that I noticed that I do want to give a big shout out and I've forgotten my likes is the Joker, the underground like horrorcore kind of rapper. Q was listening to his song on the plane and it blew my mind. Because... <laughs> this is somebody I've been listening to for years and it was really cool to hear his song in this movie. And it said Ari Scope Records. Is that a real thing and is Joker on it? Are we breaking news right now? Ari Scope now has a record company. Joker. Now signed to Ari Scope Records. Wrong. In general, I wasn't a huge fan of the pacing of this movie. It seemed really slow. It took about 40 minutes before they even get to the swamp. And that's okay, because I enjoyed the characters and stuff. But even when they're at the swamp, there's a few like chase scenes where it just kind of like goes on for a little bit and everything pretty much looks the same. And because it is kind of like a one location movie, everybody's within like a 50 yard radius. So there's not a lot that can possibly happen. And unfortunately it did get a little bit boring. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. If you're a fan of the original Hatchet, you're probably going to enjoy this movie because it does have a lot of the same elements. Victor Crowley returns. He is vicious and brutal, he kills a lot of people, and we have a similar style of comedy. The characters are all excellent, you're going to love them. It's funny, it's upbeat, and it's something you can throw on with some friends that you're really going to enjoy. Unfortunately, I did have some issues because I didn't love the pacing. It just seemed like this movie took a step back when it came to the ridiculous over-the-top nature that Victor Crowley had. I really wanted to see him rip the shit out of people, and unfortunately it doesn't happen as much as you'd like it to. Still worth watching, definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you've seen all three so far. So I'm gonna give this two and a half Victor plushies out of five. If you've seen Hatchet 1, 2, and 3, then you're going to expect something from this franchise because the films have consistently one up themselves in how they deliver their story and how they deliver their content. So with Victor Crowley, there is an expectation that they're going to try and one up themselves. And in this film, I felt that they did not. But I completely understand why, because they did the whole thing in secret. The film itself is good, you get some good on-screen kills, you get some very interesting characters, and it's very enjoyable. It's just, there are some elements like the pacing and the one location that I didn't necessarily enjoy and I thought that there could have been more done with it, but there are some great characters and the film is very well shot and well put together that I think everyone should go check it out. Whether you haven't seen the franchise or you have seen the franchise, it's a good time. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half, sign these nuts out of five. I just saw you sign that girl's tits. What are you, homophobic? As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, there are links in the description where you can find it. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay updated with everything, bloodbath and beyond.